Okay, in this problem we want to try and get the electric flux through an inclined surface, uh, rotated, but the thing is in this case that the size of the area is different. In the previous problem we took the, the original surface and we just rotated it keeping the area, the size of the area the same. In this case we're going to rotate the area but we're going to project it, make it increase its size such that the point here projects back onto this corner and this point projects back exactly onto this corner and in this case do you expect that the electric flux through the inclined surface would be the same or bigger or smaller than the electric flux through the back surface now if you think about the problem from the point of view of electric field lines any electric field line that goes through this surface will have to go through this one by the way we constructed it because we constructed this surface to project back onto the original one so by definition by the way we constructed this inclined surface every line that goes through this surface has to go through this one too so we expect from the point of view of intuition that the flux should be the same now how would this work out mathematically that's what we want to try and see in this problem so in this problem we get this we have the same given that the electric field is uniform so e is constant and it's in the k-hat direction at every point in space, it's uniform, and we want the electric flux through the surface that has sides B and C. And we want to compare that electric flux through the surface that has sides B and A. So if you want to get the electric flux through the inclined surface, you cut up the surface into small elements of area. You look at the electric field vector and the area vector, which is perpendicular to the surface, and the angle between them. And you add the electric flux through for each element of area, and you sum for all the elements of area, and you take the limit when the size of the area goes to zero. It's the same process for every surface. So the, the, the electric flux through each element of area is E dotted into the area, which means E the magnitude of E, the magnitude of the area vector, times cosine of the angle between them. Now in this problem, the angle theta between the area vector and electric field is exactly the same for every single element of area. And so cosine theta is a constant, and E is a constant also. So we can take E and cosine theta out of the integrate, out of the summation, and you're left with the, this limit of sums. You're, what does this limit of sums do? You're adding all the elements of area for the inclined surface. When you add all those elements of area, what do you get? Of course, you get the total area of the inclined surface. And since this inclined surface has side B and side C, then the area is just B times C. So we can replace all this by just B times C. So what we've got so far is the flux through the inclined surface. And as we said before, it's proportional to, or it has the same concept as the number of lines going through the inclined surface. So what's left now is to try to compare this with the flux through the back surface. And we'll be able to do this by looking more closely at this cosine theta term. So if you look at this inclined surface, uh, inclined problem from here, from the side view, what will you see from the side view? You'll see that the z-axis is pointing to your right, and you'll see that the y-axis is pointing above, like this, and this line is basically the side view of this inclined plane, this one. So you don't see the plane here, you only see the side of it. The electric field points in the z-direction, as it does here, it points in the z-direction. The area vector is perpendicular to the plane, so it's perpendicular to the plane here, this angle is 90 degrees, and so this area, this distance is A, there's the distance A, and the length here from here to here is C. It's exactly this length here from here to here is C. So this is the side view. So it's going to be important, the side view, to determine the equivalence of this angle, which is the angle between E and the area vector, and this angle in this triangle. Because when we get cosine theta, it'll be much easier to get cosine theta from this angle here. So let's prove that these two angles are equal. Well, we know that this whole angle is 90 degrees. So that means theta plus alpha is 90 degrees. And if you look at this angle, this alpha is exactly the same as this alpha. And then in this triangle, this is 90 degrees. So that means that theta plus alpha here, this, I mean, this angle, which we don't know, plus alpha is also 90 degrees. 
So since theta plus alpha is 90 and this and this angle is 90, so that means that this is also theta. So this angle is theta, exactly the same as the angle between E and the area vector. Okay, so now we can get cosine theta easily from this triangle. Cosine theta is adjacent over the hypotenuse. The adjacent is A, the hypotenuse is C, so cosine theta is just A over C. So now I can take away the cosine theta in this equation and put instead of it A over C. When you do that, you'll notice that you have C here on the numerator and C in the denominator. Those two C's will cancel out. And so you get what? You get that the electric flux is equal to E times A times B. Because the cosine theta was A over C, the C cancelled with the C, you get E times A times B. Now what is E times A times B? It's nothing more than the electric flux through the back surface, through this surface. So we just proved that the electric flux through the inclined surface, the one that was made in such a way that the, all the corners project back onto the original surface, it's exactly the same as the electric flux through the original surface, this back surface which means that if you think about it in the concept of electric field lines any electric field line that goes through the back surface also goes through the inclined surface 